Keeping saltwater fishing corals is the most fascinating and addictive hobby in the known universe, and if you don't have a reef tank, there are many reasons why you should get one. However, in life there is no such thing as perfection, so today I'm going to talk you through the five things I hate most about the hobby. First up is coral growth. Hear me out. When you set up a new tank, you want nothing more than for it to be completely packed full of maturely grown out corals. And when you get to the stage where your tank is properly grown out and matured, it is an absolute joy to behold every day. But there is a dark side to coral growth. I can guarantee you that corals will grow exactly where you don't want them to. This will result in coral warfare where they start to sting and kill their neighbours, blocking flow in your tank and taking up valuable swimming space for your fish. Now with some corals you can easily frag them and sell off the excess growth for a profit. But those corals are never the ones that grow fastest in your tank. The ones that grow fastest are the ones you don't want to grow at all. And cruelly enough it is often the most beginner friendly and easy to keep corals that are the culprits. So that mesmerising pulsing xenia frag you love so much on day one can easily get to the point where it takes over your tank and ruins your enjoyment. Number two on my list of pet peeves is the forbidden fruit of the most beautiful fish in the hobby. Now pretty much all saltwater fish are absolutely stunning. They have varied colours, amazing patterns and even unique shapes. And it's the immense variety that will mean you will never get bored of this hobby. But almost all of the most stunning fish are off limits for one reason or another. And I can guarantee that one fish you want the most will either eat corals, eat your cleanup crew or in some cases even other fish, be complete and utter disease magnets or bullies to your other fish or even if they don't tick one of those boxes they will be outrageously expensive or worst of all are just plain difficult to keep and that last category of difficult to keep fish is the worst because you'll convince yourself it's worth a punt you'll buy the fish and then sadly realize that you can't meet its needs which means it will more than likely wither and die in front of your eyes meaning you'll have to live with knowing that that was your fault Number three on my list is that everything in my life is now blue. The introduction to the hobby of blue LED lighting is, to my mind, one of the most incredible developments in the hobby. Blue LEDs can make your coral look like a different animal from day to night, and to my mind the fluorescence you see under blue LEDs is the single biggest wow factor in the hobby. But the trade-off is that having 500 watts of blue LEDs over your tank will make everything in a five mile radius blue. When your neighbours walk past your house at night, they'll see blue. If your tank is your living room, when you sit in front of the TV eating your evening meal, you'll be eating a blue lasagna. And if you've got a tank in your home office, it won't be long before your colleagues are asking why your face is blue. Now if you were to show people how awesome your reef tank is, they might understand why you put up with it. But when I tell people it's because I've got blue lights over my fish tank, they just think I'm a child. And the penultimate pet peeve on my list is the sheer volume of cables you accrue. At last count, I had 32 plugs on my main count and I'm not even sure how that happened. But the worst of it is that I'm adding new equipment all the time, so it is literally impossible to organize my cables. That means I'm greeted by Spaghetti Junction anytime I open my cabinet. And when I finally set aside some time to tidy the cables, I almost always get halfway through and then give up, resulting in cables all over my floor. And this is only made worse when you see someone post a photo online of an insanely tidy cabinet with pro-level cable management. And as if that's not enough, you can guarantee their sump will be clean too, and their tank will look spectacular. Now before I get to my number one pet peeve, I want to list a few honourable mentions. Or probably better put, dishonourable mentions. First is the amount of storage you end up using. And I reckon around 90% of available storage spaces in my house are taken up by fish tank crap. Then there's cleaning equipment. Equipment gets dirty with algae all the time and really should be cleaned regularly for maximum performance. But maintenance is pretty much the biggest drag in the entire hobby and I just hate it. And that segues into the next honourable mention, noisy equipment. <laughs> which of course gets louder the longer you leave it between maintenance. And the final honourable mention is random coral deaths. Corals can die for any number of reasons, but it's most frustrating when everything else in your tank is fine and you have no explanation as to why it's died. And my number one reef tank pet peeve is testing. Now this is arguably the most stupid pet peeve on the list because each test only takes a couple of minutes and it gives you information that will make your tank look better. Testing parameters regularly helps you get in tune with your tank, understand what makes it look good and should prevent your tank from slipping downhill which will mean you'll avoid things like coral deaths and nuisance algae. But the reason I hate testing so much is because it's never ending and to get the best out of your tank you should be carrying out several tests 
every single week. And I always seem to remember that my tank needs testing at the point at which I want to relax most and just enjoy watching the thing. And there is no amount of money I wouldn't pay for an automatic tester that tests all parameters for me. Now some devices like that do already exist, but guess what? They also need constant bloody maintenance. You just can't win. Now this topic was inspired by Matthew from Bulk Reef Supply, who made a similar video a few weeks ago, which I'll link in the description below. And of course, in the interest of balance, next week I'll tell you the five things I love most about the hobby. So make sure you like and subscribe for that, and I'll see you next week.